Welcome to Listen to My Channel. Welcome to The Good Good. This is The Good Good coming your way. The Good Good that is entering your world. For some of you, I feel like it's already in there. Mm-hmm. I'm already getting messages. Pile one, pile two, pile three. I will see you in your reading. Time stamps. Time stamps are in the description box below. What is the good good coming your way? What's the good news? What's the good stuff coming your way? Oh, I'll see you in your reading. Bye. Hey there, Paul One. 33 seconds. The good good coming your way. Oh, is company. This also looks like a companion. This also looks like what? Zoom, zoom. This also feels like, yeah, I mean, it's company. 12. I love that. That's one of my favorite numbers. Um, with this showing up in the reverse, I don't know. It, first of all, like I said in the beginning of the video, I feel like this is energy that is already in your world, but in a trickle way. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just there. With this, it almost feels like something that you've been avoiding, pushing away. And for some of you, there's... <laughs> There's this energy of, which is really cute. I always find this energy so interesting. When we avoid something and we finally agree that I don't like this and we declare it to ourselves in a full way, all of a sudden we become open to it. I think for the longest time, I'm not going to say that. For the long, I'll say this. Lately, I've been baking. I am number one to say baking is soulless. Come for me. It is. You have to measure everything. It has to be precise. Whereas in cooking, you can feel your way through it. You can, you know, like change things as you go. You can do like you can do so much in cooking and baking. It's like numbers, measurements, and you don't know if it's good till it's done. And by that point, it's too late. But I've been baking more often. What? <laughs> as a stress reliever. What? <laughs> maybe because it's kind of soulless i digress um this is also that energy of admitting to yourself that you don't want something that maybe you have wanted and that a part of you doesn't really want it and it's in that acquiescing it's in that like recognition of that other energy that exists within you or the energy that boldly exists within you it's in sort of giving credence to that it's in sort of like relaxing into that energy <sighs> that there's no more resistance. It's so funny when this happens because it's such a real thing. For so, so for some of you, that's a thing, right? This is company. This is companionship. This is perhaps people invading your space. Invading your world. And I use the word invading because it's a word that you would use. It's like you would have used the word invading yesterday, but today you're kind of like, all right, <laughs> okay. There's a little one here, a little baby boy and a kitty. I feel like this kitty is older. It feels like an older cat that's been around before the boy. And the cat may not have been enjoying, may have not been the happiest when this little creature invaded its home with its humans. But now it's so close to this little human. You know what I mean? So there's something about an invasion, something that you may not have wanted or may not want that involves people for sure in your world that is actually really, really good. Like there's something about this that it may be it may be overwhelming to you. Like I don't know what your reasons are, but it's really good. Like it feels great once this comes and once you also submit to it being around or you experiencing it, you kind of go, this is actually nice. We're using the green oracle today. And this is card number 12. I love 12. This, if this is my message, hey, future loose baby. I know. If this is my message, because I watch my pick of cards, baby. They do be reading for me. Like, they really, really are on point. Um, <laughs> oddly, but also not. Um, but 
so to those people who are me, who are like, hell no, I don't want nobody around me. Don't talk to me. Don't message me. Don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> if you are me, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, except um, it's good. <laughs> it's good for you to be around people here and there. And there's going to come a point where you're going to like it. I guarantee it. You're going to like the way you look. So this concept in the book, it says it's about pets, a child and a cat sleeping next to each other in similar positions. That's fair. A concept that is as far as it can be from the idea of primeval and wild nature. We can just see an house. Okay. We can just see a house cat sleeping close to a child. Humans can develop a connection to nature and life even in the busiest city, sharing space with an animal, living together with it. And sometimes, oh my god, the person and the pet will mirror each other. There is no great lesson, but the fact that the unadulterated company with animals is something capable to touch the most inner chords of our being. Happiness and satisfaction that is totally unglamorous, but yet so perfect. In such a tender simplicity, the inner child of each of us may come forward. Don't live like an island. Love is simple. Protect the sleep of the innocent. Accept being happy from the simpler things. Let's talk about something that I completely missed. <laughs> the pet. For some of you, especially if you've lost a pet, perhaps you didn't want a new pet. For some of you, you may start feeling like, maybe I do want a new pet. Maybe I am more open now to having a new pet. And it may be the same species or it may be something entirely different. For some of you who may not have wanted children, you may be wanting to have a child or adopt. If you've been wondering whether you should take on something new, I think this is a sign for you to, yes, take it, take on something new, but take your time. Don't push yourself. Don't rush yourself into this new thing. Take it slowly. Take it a day at a time. Make sure you're watching yourself and your responses and how you are to make sure that you're caretaking yourself and your small child on the inside. It might be advisable for you to visit pet sanctuaries. Um, I wouldn't say go to the zoo. <laughs> I wouldn't. But um, maybe visit a friend who has a pet. Spend some time with the little animals that are domesticated, you know. Um, that might be something that is good for you. If an opportunity comes up for you to cat sit, dog sit, pet sit, mm, that might be something wise. Now, there's something here about you opening yourself up to new things, new people, and those opportunities leading you to more in the direction of what you want. For some of you, it's like your love life. The more people you allow in, obviously in 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 a in a way that is conducive like to you, but also like don't be a a biat. Okay. Don't be a little put, put, put. don't be a little this guy. Okay. Like the name of that. Like push yourself to be in company and enjoy the company of others. Like really do that. Because there's something about that that is necessary for you, I think, to be honest. Um, especially if you've been very eh, 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 eh. If you've been holding things off until you're blah, 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 you can do both. <laughs> you can both step out and also work on the things that you need to work on. Just have a balance and a moderation, but don't um, overly procrastinate, I think, yeah. Because I think, like, let's say... You know, I'm not going to meet somebody until I lose X amount of weight. I'm not going to put myself out there until I make X amount of money. I'm not going to put myself out there until I have a house or until um, my space is a certain kind of way. Do both. Do both. Start doing that other thing that you're waiting until this day happens. Start doing that because that is going to help with your goal. Um, or at least your mentality around that. So the good good coming to you, my friend, is that I want to see what else, I guess. I mean, I don't really want to use this deck, but here my hands are opening it. So I guess here we are. 
This is my OG deck. These are the elders, baby. What's the good good coming to Paw 1? Intention. Oh, something new is really coming. And I thought so. Love. I don't know if I mentioned, but like I, I think I was on the trail of the more you expose yourself to like more company, more experiences, more new sort of things that you don't usually do that you've been putting off, blah, 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 blah. The more that energy is going to feed into something else that you want, right? And I gave those sort of like examples, but really what I there's something about love. Um, for those of you looking for love, for those of you who are in a relationship, it could even help with that and feeling more love in that. Um, if if you sort of do other things this other new thing new pets or whatever animals nature da, 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 it'll help with your intention because you're sort of detaching and and giving it air and time to breathe dandelions oh i have so many in my yard <laughs> i need to destroy them i wish you everything paul um intention something that you want is coming to fruition and it's coming a little bit slowly i guess but it's also coming at your pace but your pace is also not the fastest. <laughs> but it's coming. Just make sure that you keep checking into what you want and be more a little bit more specific with yourself with the feeling so you can act accordingly. Um, because if you're slacking off on certain areas of your life and it's pushing away this other part that you want or are going for, I think that there's something inside of you that needs to be addressed, right? Um, and that's not a bad thing. That's just like, you know, recheck back in with yourself to make sure that your intention is clear and you're not spread in so many directions like this dandelion. Like pick one, follow the wind and go in that direction. And that's going to help with the seeds that you want planted. Anyway, I wish you everything. Keep your light on good luck and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Hey there, pal two. Pal two, what's the good good coming your way? These cards are in the reverse, which tells me a very interesting story, but of the energy around the people who clicked on this video. But your card is Coexist. Aww. Today we are using the green oracle. Did I call it the plant oracle? Oh my God. Today is the green oracle. And here we have predators <laughs> and prey shepherds and sheep <laughs> mountains and rivers grass and trees rocks and air all living together this is really nice it's almost like surrender for you i think for you the good good is to sort of Yes, there's troubles in your world. Of course there are. Excuse me. Are you not breathing? <laughs> you know? Um, yes, there's trouble in your world. Yes, there's angst. And yes, there's drama. Or as the Canadians say, drama. Yes, there's, you know, life is happening. Life is eclectic. Life is buzzing. Life is doing life. But that doesn't mean you have to stress out about it. Have you thought about that before? Have you ever thought about... When something is stressing you out, making it not stress you out, isn't that weird? Have you ever gone, oh man, I don't have enough money for this uh, bill that's coming up. Or, oh man, this person like didn't text me back, they're not texting me. Or, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm going to get that promotion. Oh man, that, that exam I took, I don't know if I'm going to pass it. I don't know if I passed it. And you're stressing out, you're talking about it, you're super stressed out. Have you ever just gone, okay, well, <laughs> I'm just not. It's such a strange concept to actively say, well, okay, it is what it is. Like, and really mean it, not just say it. To really be like, oh, well, okay, well. Because you've already taken the test. The bill is already coming. You've already seen how much money you got in your account. Like, you've already seen how much weight you got to lose versus the time. Like, you, you already know. Like, what's going to change? You stressing out is not going to do anything extra. But make the time between now 
And the answer, horrible and sucky. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know, have you ever just gone, well, all right. (laughs) And just not worried. Just gone, okay, well, there's just something about coexisting with the stuff and not taking it too personal. Not wearing everything on you as something that you need to care about. There's a woman I met recently who was worried about this new person in her life making an appointment somewhere else in like a week. And she started taking on responsibilities of like, I got to teach this person how to do this. I got to teach this person how to do that. And I'm like, why? She's a very caring person. Like, this is for people who care, right? Like, especially if it's about other people in your life. If you're not someone who just talks about yourself all the time and is really involved with yourself. Like, (laughs) look, like if you, if, even if you, even if you are, right, you're still a person, obviously. You have things that you worry about. But it's almost like, just like, I don't know unsubscribing from your own drama unsubscribing from like what's going on in your world and going like okay well you know if it's a friend that's complaining about something not taking it personal as if you have to fix it just listen to them be with them in it you know ask them a few questions you know how are you gonna do this or what are you thinking just you know be there for their emotional state and just trusting that they'll figure it out you don't have to make it your problem There's just something here. This is a wolf. Wolves wolves eat these baby. No. What I'm getting with this for you, the good good, is reaching a point, perhaps a breaking point, but the breaking point being the moment where you go, all right, well, like that. Like, all right, well, I can't, I can't, I'm just, there's nothing I can do. I only have five hours in the day to myself. I gotta sleep early because I gotta wake up early. This has to get done. This has to get done. That has to get done. This has to get done. There's only so many people, so many things to do. So many hours. So much time it'll take. Fuck it. <laughs> like, what can I do now? You know, there's just something about submitting, surrendering, and moving forward. And that being the good good, I feel like your perspective will be changing. The way you see the world and your environment will be changing. Like you'll be able to cope more. And not, I don't know, it's not coping in a way where, (laughs) for instance, there's something I I was talking to a dietitian early uh, today, like yesterday actually. And I was trying to tell her that I'm just gonna eat because eating gives me comfort. And I'm so stressed the fuck out that like, I'm going to take whatever comfort I can get because I have so much I need to do and I need me and energy to fucking do it all. How does this relate to you? That is coping in a way that could potentially be harmful. Eating in order to like feel good. Eating in order to feed my stress. When, you know, there's other ways to handle stress. (laughs) But, you know, moderation. But this is a coping mechanism. This coping that I'm seeing you come up with here is one where you are feeding your stresses, your anxieties, your excitements, your drama, your stuff with what it actually needs. You're feeding it the food it actually needs, which is like detachment or surrendering just kind of taking things as they are and (sighs) relaxing in the stressful situations and not allowing them to affect you you are greased up in oil and the situations around you are water and they're sliding right off you baby and eventually you kind of go oh what was i actually even stressed out about like why Why was that an issue? Why was that person's problem my issue? What was that person's drama my issue? 
if it's people at work, if it's people at home, if it's people at school, if it's people like wherever, like you worrying about that person's not other person's. And it's like, why? If it's someone close to you, sure. But like, even then, I'm not saying don't care about other people. That's not what I'm saying. It's just being able to like, not absorb it and take it personally but kind of relax and see that everything is gonna be okay like you don't have to fucking have your fingers in the shit <laughs> sorry <gasps> oh okay um this is this thing i need to read this to you oh this is a puzzle this is a puzzle Human nature relationship. A man, a wolf, a goat, and a cabbage are resting together near a river. There is a very old story about the wolf, the sheep, and the cabbage. The story says that it is impossible to have everything and that one must choose whether to sacrifice the sheep or the cabbage. Choice is about responsibility. Sacrifice is about maturity. Acceptance of loss is about reality. But actually... The puzzle suggested by the story could be solved. It is indeed possible to save both the sheep and the cabbage. Coexistence is difficult, but not impossible. Sacrifice can take the form of effort, attention, patience, and perseverance. It's not always loss. Don't think of surrender as loss. Always. It's sometimes just accepting the situation and you gain more. Solutions can be found outside the obvious choice and the majority opinion. Oh, I love that. I'm going to read that again for the people in the back. Solutions can be found outside the obvious choice and the majority opinion. But more than everything, if you look at the picture, you may realize that even for a wolf, a sheep, and a cabbage, life is not just a fight. Nature is not just about eating. <laughs> They can just stay there, resting near a calm river, peacefully. In nature, there's the watering holes, where all these animals go to the watering hole. And I'm sure some of them get eaten and stuff, but some of them don't. <laughs> yeah. It just may take some time. I think the surrendering is almost like if there's a rush that you've been feeling, a rush to get somewhere, a rush to do something, there's something here about surrendering to what is. That five hours situation that I was giving earlier, if there's so much, there's only so much time to do what you need to do, it's almost like being judicious about what you might need to do. And for some, honestly, like miracles happen. You might be able to do little things of everything or do one thing really well and have it done enough for you to do other things like there's so many ways that you can do something and you just have to relax and allow your brain to figure out a solution because when you're in stress you can't do you, you're not useful you make stressful choices stressful choices create more stressful situations you have yourself working double time when if you just relax which is not hard not easy i can say just relax but it's not easy um, but when you do just relax, there are solutions that come up. There's plans that come up. Okay, maybe I can sleep now and wake up early and I'll have more energy to do it all. Maybe if I, you know, uh, cut back on doing this. But anyway, baby girl, I call everybody girl. Your guide, your, not your guidance, but your good good here is like peace is coming your way. Surrender in the way that is like you you managing better is coming your way i don't know in what but whatever the case may be like you're finding flow in reality and there's something really magical and beautiful about that for you and i'm really happy unexpected visitors this is so cute i feel like there could be something or someone's right coming your way that either have or will have come or will come and it'll sort of reach a breaking point because now that's too many people or entities to deal with. Because this story is really about um, like traveling on a boat because the, the wolf will eat the cabbage, the, the, the goat, the goat will eat the cabbage. So you can only carry two in a boat at a time. So how can you get all of them across without neither one of them dying? 
And one of the solutions in this is as you make your return trip, you can always bring the other one back as well. Like you can do a drop off and a pickup. So it's almost like you can carry, you know, and then everybody gets over. But, you know, that's time and effort and energy and strength. But once you can do those things, like you see that there is a solution to certain things, just not the, the, the way that you were thinking. I digress. With unexpected visitors and with this showing up in the reverse, it's giving a breaking point that really makes you make snap decisions that really makes you go i can't be operating in stress anymore there's a new person new people or peoples in my world new entities in my world and i need to be i i cannot continue to be in stress or anxiety about what i want and how i want to do it if it's going to take the time then it's going to take the time if it's not going to take the time then it's not going to take it if there's a shortcut then there's a shortcut but i need to be in a clearer mind unexpected visitors talks about unexpected things there, there this is a breaking point because this is usually like a tower in a bit of some moments but it, with them showing up with this showing up in the upright this is something that to me feels pretty good i feel like there's unexpected thoughts unexpected moments solutions and magic that you haven't seen or didn't even know were coming or um, were possible. So I feel like this is really, really good news for you that's coming up here. Detours, surprises, and paradigm shifts. Yeah, this, she's opening a door and it's almost like, holy shit, there's a whole new fucking world here. Yeah, this is what I want for myself. I want this new world. I want this new ways of thinking, these new paradigms, these new ideas on how to do certain things. Like, I can... Not to say recreate the wheel, but I feel like you'll be thinking differently because you just have to. You've reached a breaking point in your old thinking thinking ways and then you'll just kind of go, okay, well. And once you breathe, your brain gives you what you need, right? Your intuition, your spirit can finally come through enough for you to listen. Expect the unexpected. No matter how detailed your plans are, how clear the road you think is, there's going to be detours. And at first they may seem inconvenient. That's what I'm saying. This sort of like breaking point, which may have come already for some of you, honestly. Because if I, if you remember in the beginning of the reading, I said this energy is like of the video even because they're all reversed. <laughs> it feels like it's it's in your world already, but it's about to like climb up. It's about to become really, really good. But it's just starting out now in this in this sort of way. But anyway, at first, detours may seem inconvenient. Of course they do. But a surprise turn of events signals that the adventure of life is beginning to get interesting. No one can plan for synchronicity, for fate, or destiny, except spirit who knows what you, what you don't. Life is full of surprises, so stay on your toes and enjoy this exciting new adventure you weren't expecting. There's a plan for your life that may not match up with your agenda, but it is the good good. It is a good thing. This thing that these things that are coming into your world they're they're good they may not feel good they may feel horrible they may make you feel some type of way but they're actually good this is just a phase this is just the the change this is just the the the, the pop once the pops settle the epiphanies and the releases that happen from that are gonna be so good for you pal too i'm so excited um godspeed keep your light on good luck and i wish you everything Bye bye what up, pal three? Pal three, what's the good good coming your way? Now, they're all in reverse, right? And I kind of spoke about that a little bit in the beginning of the reading. I could tell they were all in the reverse. And I feel like this is energy that's coming into your world, okay? Um, it's already active in your world right now. I am using the green oracle. Tell me why I almost called it the plant oracle. <laughs> what? Anyway, nature's imperfection coming through in the reverse. I don't want to say that for you more than everyone. This honestly, every single call, every single message in this reading today has been very the same. <laughs> I really should have just done a collective because hello. Um, anyway, I didn't know that until I flipped the cards, but I knew they were all in reverse, but I didn't know what the cards were. But truly, it's the same message. Nature's imperfection. <sighs> isn't imperfect anyway like and i really wish and hope that the good good is you realizing that you are stunning beautiful handsome or whatever as you are 
And I'm realizing that more and more. When you look at your preferences in a partner, in, in like men or women, and you look at your friends' preferences in men or women, the people who, like celebrities that people think are so attractive that you don't, I don't think Ryan Gosling is attractive. He's okay, but I don't go goo goo gaga for him. He's not my heartthrob. You know who is though? Chris freaking Evans. Mm. <laughs> Uh, not many people think Benedict Cumberbatch is attractive. Not many people think those other guys, <laughs> I forgot their names, are attractive. But to some people, they are. What am I saying? Shut up, Pal 3. Like, if you're one of those people who are like, I have a this and that, and I wouldn't want, someone wouldn't want, it, 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 boo, 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 boo. you talk about yourself, baby, because someone would want your big ass nose. Someone would want your large ass forehead. Someone would want your small toes. Someone would want your whatever fingernails. Like someone would want your big teeth. Someone would want your big eyes. Someone would want your small nose. Someone would want your, but like, <laughs> you should not <on> yourself. <laughs> okay, like, what do you mean? There is some, well, there's more than one person for everybody. That's in love. Oh, I wouldn't be hired because I don't meet the qualifications of this and that. Oh, they wouldn't hire me because I don't look like X and Z. Oh, they wouldn't na 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 because I don't na 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 na. Stop it. What, like you are doing that to yourself. Don't blame other people for what you think about yourself. Ew. No. A, a carrot that's got a hook in it. <laughs> A carrot that's got another carrot growing out of it? Baby, nobody said carrots all have to look like Bugs Bunny carrots. Hello? They are still carrots at the end of the day. They don't have to be perfect. And perfect is, like, we decide what that is. They're still fruit. They're still nutritious. Like, there's just something about that that I had to say for somebody and myself, really. Because sometimes we do be looking at ourselves and going like, oh, they wouldn't. Oh, uh, I, uh. But like, no, there's nothing wrong necessarily with us. We're wrong. Our perception of ourselves is wrong. We are not wrong. Our perception of ourselves is wrong. Other people out here being like, oh, oh, yes. Anyway, listen, nature's imperfection, right? This could be about paths as well. In your world, there may be a path that you've taken so many detours. You've gone not even the scenic route. Like you had a, a missed connection and you had to get rerouted to a whole other place. And you're like, what the? F yeah, like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be somewhere else by now. But there's something here about the journey. There's something here about how you are, the, what you have done. And that being perfect and that sucks it can suck to think that what we think is wrong is right when someone isn't into us we think it's wrong because it hurts our feelings but it's right it's not wrong for someone to not be into us when we're not into somebody it's not wrong it's right when we don't get a job or we don't get the thing that we wanted we, we 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 can tend to believe it's wrong or we're wrong or there's something wrong with us but why does that have to be the immediate thing that we jump to for you pal three i feel like you're getting in in my vibe of 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 knowing and seeing that actually i'm gonna bless it all i'm more fati i'm gonna bless everything i'm gonna bless the fate i've had I don't know how close you were to saying thank you for the journey that you've been on because everybody's been through many different things. And it really depends on where you're at and your journey with yourself and accepting that you've been through certain things and saying thank you for them even when they sucked. A sucked is an understatement. But there's something here about you doing that. You've reached a point in your life, the good news, you are reaching the point in your life. You're getting to that climb where you're noticing. You're waking up out of like the bullshit. You're rubbing your eyes and kind of going, wait a minute. I'm fucking the shit. I'm actually pretty goddamn good. I'm actually da 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 Or the path I've taken 
it's taught me this, it's taught me that, it's taught me this, it's taught me that. I can do this, I can do that. And it's preparing me for something. And with this, I feel like you've been feeling those tricklings. As I've been saying, and there's coming to be a crescendo eventually. And then once you reach that high point, you'll really have a great vantage point of seeing that, holy cow, everything that I've been through, I can see that it's prepared me for this moment, this phase of my life, where I'm on top, I'm doing good things. I can see that what I've been through is valuable. The fuck? It's valuable. Things that you would shit on yourself are actually valuable. And they're being valued. And it's not weird, it's unique. People have been looking for you. Whether it's jobs, whether it's lovers, whether it's relationships, platonic, familiar, or whatever. Whether it's business, whether it's, I don't know, bitch. Like, people have been, you are exactly what they've been hoping for, that they didn't think existed. But there you are. And even you, you will be in a spot where you'll be able to accept it. Meaning you've gone through the mental transformation of seeing yourself and the things that you thought were flaws is really valuable. The things that you thought were heavy is really valuable. I love this for you. This is probably the most powerful one. Shit. <laughs> Don't tell the other piles, but I'm telling you. Nature is different and not standardized. So many fruits and none with a perfect shape. That's what we're looking at here. <laughs> substance and appearance for so long we have been encouraged to focus on the latter as it makes the world so much simpler in the tv heroes and heroines are all young intense and beautiful in the supermarkets fruits and vegetables look at us with perfect shape and shiny colors that seem so perfect that is not natural nature is full of imperfections uniqueness differences and it's so it's so often ugly <laughs> But there is beauty in the way, there's beauty in that way of being ugly. Real is actually beautiful. Weight, glasses, and wrinkles are all beautiful if you learn to look at what's real. As for fruit and vegetables, taste, health, and deliciousness are not in sight. They really are in the substance of it. That's what I was saying, like... A a rose by any other name is still a fucking rose, baby. A carrot by any other shape is still a carrot, baby. They rot the same. They cook the same. They they grow the same. They just look different. But they're the same. Don't fall for the okie doke. And I feel like for some of you in this pal, you won't be falling for the okie doke. You've changed, pal three. You've changed in how you see yourself, how you see your world, how you see your past. And how you'll also be seeing people moving forward and how people will be seeing you. Oh, it's about to get real for you. Oh, that's kind of scary. In like a very exciting way. Like you're about to really experience life (laughs) as life. You know what power that is to look at an imperfection, to look at a fault, to look at a mishap, a detour and go, okay, yeah, sure. And not get so bent up out of shape because this happened, this didn't happen, this didn't go the way you da 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 And just kind of take it with ease. You know how how many people stress out over shit that's just like, bruh, you know, like, hey, hey, look. Seek improvement, but do not chase perfection. Find what is real behind any glamorous disguise. Accept the flaws in others, amen, and yourself as something natural. Diversity is a part of nature. Stop judging people so hard. Stop judging yourself so hard. They really do be going hand in hand. How we see other people. Anyway. Any any additional guidance? Any additional what good good is for my pal number three, please? Additional good good. That's so funny. Unexpected visitors in reverse. That's kind of funny. That's hilarious. Um, It kind of did some flippity flips. But it's definitely in the reverse. I'm not going to front. Um, in the protection. All right, let's find it. Unpleasant news. This is good. This makes sense because I think you may have gotten bad news recently. Or could get bad news. And when I say bad news, I say that in a very, you know, objective way. 
it's not news that you wanted to hear or whatever but i feel like there's something about this news that takes you to a point where you kind of go okay it sucks it really sucks but there's something about (laughs) it's weird there's something about this news that kind of makes you i don't want to say happy But it kind of makes you see something that you didn't see before. And you, there's a, there's a bit of gratefulness here or there's a bit of like understand. There's something here that happens. I'm hearing just, there must be something there that wasn't there before. Like there's something that happens in the peripheral that when this thing that doesn't, you know, this un- this unpleasant news or whatever, this thing that didn't go the way you wanted it to, there's something about that that makes you look at something else and see that, oh, actually, it's low-key, kind of works out that this didn't go the way it, the way I wanted it to. There's something about a pivot. I'm just seeing something in your peripheral where you kind of go, oh, actually, that's better. This is almost like going somewhere. It's, I'll say this. It's almost like you you have a date. You finally, you know, that person that you wanted to meet up with. Like, you're like, oh, my God, they're coming. And we're going to meet up. And, and, and last minute, they kind of go, hey, um, I can't make it. I'm not coming or whatever. And you're like, wow, like, what the heck? And you're already at the restaurant. Like, you're already in your Sunday best. Like, you're already there, baby. And you're like, wow. And you look up and you see someone else smiling at you. And you're like, oh, (laughs) okay. Or, you know, you see a friend and you're like, you catch up and uh, whatever. But there's something about, you know what? It kind of works out. Um, I know there's other examples. Maybe not getting a job that you've been through so many different levels of interviews for. And then you look you you kind of go oh man that sucks but then you get an invitation to go to like a family reunion or a trip or something you say wow i wouldn't have been able to go do that i wouldn't have been able to do that had this job come through or had it not been postponed or something like that you know what i mean like there's just something in your peripheral that you're able to pivot to and you kind of it kind of really encapsulates this thing of like imperfections in life being all about perception and that's what unexpected visitors actually says as well unpleasant news is only unpleasant when you resist accepting what is sometimes the thing most desired is kept away from you because it's not for the highest good of you or others sometimes there is loss or disappointment due to a destiny whose pattern cannot be understood yet Change is something that may be forced upon you like bad weather that threatens a boat. Adapt to the shift in conditions and think how beautiful the sky will be afterward. Accept what is and a more fulfilling path will soon be revealed. Remember that if you expect the unexpected, nothing can come as a shock. If you, and that's the beautiful thing and the powerful thing about this thing that's coming towards you, like this good good that's in you, it's it's a life-changing good good because when you change your perspective like you've changed your fucking life pal three and the perspective you're beginning to adopt the perspective you're really entering into and beginning to embrace in the spirit of your life is one where you're not taking imperfections personally you're not taking detours so personally you're kind of accepting and seeing okay there has to be not even i mean next the the, the good level will be there must be some good in this but the expert level is okay (laughs) okay you know not expecting anything positive or negative from a detour that's happened and just allowing it to be what it is i wish you everything uh pal three keep your light on good luck i'll see you next time